Now, you heard me talk about the versatility of the, the artists in, in the New York City Opera Company. This, this uh, fox, <laughs> the last time you saw her on television, she was doing a mad scene from Lucia. She's still and doing apparently a mad the scene. madness has continued. Does your family know about Lost this it. fetish? <laughs> and this one in our new production of Alcina, which I was talking about before, <laughs> Uh, was also a boy by the name of Oberto, but uh, since then I see you've grown a red beard. Well, I brought my pipe. I thought this would be highbrow. <laughs> Masterpiece theater. It's delightful. I'm not, I'm not going to ask you how you two approach the roles differently from the others, because that's ludicrous. I want to know, uh, what do you got on underneath all that? Well, lots of padding. I mean, if you kind of look, you can see knee pads. You want to see? No. No. <laughs> Just tell me. This is for family I don't viewing. Want to, I don't want to be saying Shoulder, I, I mean, elbow. For my art elbow pads and and I have built-in Joan Crawford shoulders uh -huh. here in my costume and, I look, and lots of our own padding we have. So. Um, I can understand how one prepares for Lucia or Oberto or you're going to do Mimi on our national tour. How does one prepare for a fox? Well actually you know what I, do? I have watched every single PBS animal show that there is. I have all of them on videotape. In fact last night I watched one on otters just to remember. Do you know an opera are. that's got some otters in it? We could probably find one. <laughs> Something or otter, huh? I'm just a, 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 oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. It's God. okay. There's more. <laughs> the hysterical thing to me is I dieted for this production. And now you're all headed. <laughs> Nonstop Sarah Lee could not have done for my hips what Maurice Sendak did. <laughs> but I could, I could tell you're thinner. <laughs> <laughs> Where? <laughs> uh, you two do a terrific tumbling act coming up. We both count the black and blues after this opera. Do you? Oh, sure. Did you did you go to a gym or anything? For, uh, no, and I wish I mean, I did, I pay, did I pay to send you two to a gym? No. no. Being Catholic Speaking about that, all that healing. But, Being uh, Catholic yeah. helps. <laughs> oh, man. Um, do you enjoy this kind of role? Well, I love this because it's, it's you don't have to worry about singing. You know, it's not a, a great singing role the way, you know, Lucia or Puritani or something like that is, but it's, uh, it's a great acting part, you know, I mean, when, when you get to, well, I shouldn't give it away what's coming up in the next When scene, you get to move your leg when somebody yeah, scratches I mean, your neck. Be an animal on the set, it's just wonderful. It's I, I literally love animals anyway. I think. What did you uh, say to Maurice when he showed you this costume? Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why did you tell me this before I dieted? No, um, the I get a lot great. of they're just very warm. I mean, they're I mean, obviously with a wet hot. towel, they're very hot, and there's a lot of stuff underneath them. So. I bet. I get a lot of mail about why the male uh, fox is played by a lady. You know, they're always when you come out with a little, you know, strut. My they're John always call a Janini fox. Exactly. They're always very surprised when the female voice comes out of it. And I'm very busy answering the letters. What and, do you and say? I say that Mr. <laughs> Betty, you're not check wanted it that way. And that um, it, the adjustment to a male voice simply really doesn't work in this kind of uh, part. And for myself, I'm crazy about the blend of the two female voices. Yeah. I just love it. It's a lovely it's, duet. It, yeah. It's mm -hmm. so exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and one phrase that is coming up, I, they, I will spill it a little bit. Uh, can it be that I am beautiful? Oh, is, isn't that heaven? Uh, it's not. I, keep, I just keep, just kills me every time. I just yeah, love it. I, I keep thinking really now he, he should have put that line in six times. Mm -hmm. He does. <laughs> it does. It's oh, over he puts and it over, over, and over and over. It's a, <laughs> it's an enchanting piece, and I'm. You've done. Have you ever seen it from the front? I saw one act of it from the front and it yeah. just actually it just knocked me over maybe you can run home and watch it <laughs> i always run to the wings for the final with yeah uh, act with the That's children the nice and the don't give it around. away though the last it's, scene is it's very moving and it does sort of point out the fact that that animals somehow have managed to live on this earth with a little more respect for each other's lives than, than the, uncivilized than souls uncivilized souls mm -hmm. that, uh, really than than we humans have it's, uh, you know that there are people weep when you die. I won't tell how that happens, but they, they do cry when that happens. I'm, the most incredible thing happened one performance was all of a sudden in that dead silence, I heard this one little tiny voice say, Mommy, is she dead? Oh, oh, it just, I thought, yeah. oh no. All right, we have to, you have to go back and go to work. I'm, I'm enough of looking at these costumes. Uh -huh. Have a good time. Thank you okay. very much. See, See you, you soon. Later. No. <laughs> and those were our two foxes. Gianna Rolandi and Nadia Pele, both of them from New York. Gianna Rolandi, born in New York City. Nadia Pele, a native of 
Long Island in New York. The second act of Janacek's The Cunning Little Vixen has four scenes. The conductor of this performance coming to you live from the stage of the New York State Theater in the Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts Complex in New York City. The conductor is Scott Bergeson. The first scene of Act Two takes place in the Badger's Den. And then there is an interlude. The second scene takes place in Pasek's Tavern. Another interlude. The third scene takes place on the edge of the forest. The fourth interlude of this second act and the fourth scene of the act takes place in the Vixen's Den. Interestingly, the first appearance of the Vixen in Czechoslovakia was in a comic strip. And I'll have more to say about that later in our performance. Right now, as you can see, the house lights have dimmed and we await the reappearance of our conductor for the second act of The Cunning Little Vixen by Leos Janacek. And here he is. <laughs> Conductor Scott Bergeson for act two of The Cunning Little Vixen by Leos Janacek, the New York City Opera. starts moving in. People like us have to move out. 